Today we're tying a craft fur walleye fly. Stay tuned. So good morning. Today I'm at the bench tying up some uh, craft fur walleye streamers and it uh, streamers that not only will be offered on the uh, new website that uh, we're finishing up over the next couple weeks um, and we'll have that up and up and running uh, shortly. Um, but also uh, streamers that I'm planning on using specifically this spring uh, using that uh, Wisconsin rig or the Wolf River rig, uh, the walleye three-way rig um, in the rivers here. I'm trying it out. I'm hoping to get some of that on video. So this morning I'm preparing hooks. Uh, in the first, for each of the patterns, there's two patterns that I'm tying uh, right now. Uh, I think I'll break the video up into two separate videos. But the first pattern is this uh, done in chartreuse with a gold body in gold tinsel, uh, crystal flash. And it's a very, it's a, it's a really nice looking fly. Um, I was uh, kind of impressed with the craft fur after I used it. Um, that was the first, this was the first fly I tied with, uh, with the craft fur body. And um, was really happy with the results. There's a second one that I tied that I'm just calling a uh, fur shiner just because it's the craft fur. And to me it just looks like a typical shiner pattern uh, done and uh, I use a craft fur polar bear on that one but in preparing the hooks uh, for this and I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna tie up a couple dozen of each hook size I'm using one aught one and two and these are Daiichi hooks I believe they're the uh, 2460 Daiichi streamer hook. It's a 3x long hook. At this step I'm using a, um, a 2 watt round nylon. Uh, this is a Danville thread. You could use your A thread because we're just building the bodies at this point. Um, I like using the A thread for the body if it's the um, black thread base with the mylar uh, with open wraps up the thread. I think the thread gives a little bit more texture, uh, so the current flowing across that fly uh, helps it, draws it down just a little, not a whole lot, maybe if an inch or two um, when it's being pulled through the current or if you're trolling with flies like this. But remember, with tandem streamers, uh, they would add beads on the uh, connecting line and not just for show um, they were somewhat of an attractor but also the beads would um, create drag on the fly and help pull it down just just slightly so for this uh, I lock the thread on just before the hook point and then I will get a length of our crystal yarn or uh, tinsel yarn rather something that's long enough I can do one or two jigs with um, this seems fairly long, but more than likely it will just do two. Now this is um, tinsel yarn from Universal Vice. It's just some old inventory I have. It's kind of braided in a tube. It reminds me of a paracord with the center pulled out. Uh, I lock it in and walk a few wraps towards the bend of the hook and then I'm going to reverse my wraps and these don't need to be touching wraps 
uh, they're fairly open just not very wide as I walk the thread up the shank of the hook we don't need the black to show um, is a solid color because we're going to cover the the thread base but we do want a little bit of surface area for a little bit of head cement that will add uh, just to increase the durability slightly so I add just a drop and just drag it down the length of the thread and I was actually a little quick with that because the pressure must be a little high um, because as soon as I took the cap off that bottle of lacquer based head cement and it's it's not a full bottle it's not that I had the bottle over full <clears throat> but the uh, you know there was a drop already coming coming out the tip so I have a feeling the uh, I should check the barometer so very simply we take our tinsel yarn and first angle it away towards the bend of the hook for a couple wraps before reversing our angle and with touching or slightly overlapping wraps just walk this right up the hook shank keep some tension on it. Now I chose the tinsel yarn for this base. Um, I did tie a few that had a size A thread base of black and a ribbing of silver uh, and gold. I did I think I did one of each at least of mylar tinsel and that um, that that's a body that that I tie uh, for tandem streamers that we sell here uh, around the Finger Lakes area, and it's pretty standard as a body, um, the, you know the the way that you would color a body for a, for a streamer, a hair wing streamer, and uh, I liked it, but I wanted something a little bit different, so I got out the tinsel yarn. Um, so it does add an awful lot of flash now because of the way that it is woven and it's hollow in the center and as you wrap it on here it isn't flat by any means um, it does have some bumps it's very imperfect um, so the light hitting that goes in, in many many different directions so I, I think it gives an awful lot of flash um, and would look great going through the water and also because of its diameter it's a little bit thicker because of its texture it has that little bit extra drag um, so I want the current to affect the streamers by being able to hold on to the streamer as it's being pulled through the current and um, as you're twitching your rod or pulling it over structure with that drop shot um, style weight on it um, that the body will actually help add that slight movement in the fly giving it a more lifelike appearance um, that's my thought process um, with it could I just wrap a single flat mylar up the shank of the hook to make it nice and shiny I, I could and that would probably be perfect looking at uh, the flies uh, the from Wisconsin um, the Wolf River rig flies the white bass flies they're tied super simple very sparse typically with just a flat mylar wrap right up the hook shank and very very sparse wings so I'm trying to combine what I would think is a good looking streamer what I'm trying to do is um, what I have in my mind the proportions to a streamer now and keep in mind I live in central New York I'm a big fan of the Catskill style of tying um, the history of fly tying in particular um, Reuben Cross is my all-time favorite fly tire so that's the perspective I'm coming from in terms of what I think a streamer should look like. Uh, combine that with what I was taught by my father as a very young boy, the 
bucktail type teasers that we fished um, in the Susquehanna River as a kid. All that information in the back of my mind is all coming together in, in how I'm kind of making my decisions here. Uh, for for these streamers trying to be a little bit original and trying not to um, really copy anything trying to produce something that's a little bit fancier than that Wolf River um, white bass type um, flies maybe not as fancy as a traditional cat skill a happy medium um, and another thing to add is you know I'm tying as a production tire and I'm selling wholesale to bait shops so can I tie super fancy I most certainly can but the bait shops either aren't gonna buy them from me at the price that I would need to or the wholesale price would be so low there's no way I could make money from that so that th those are all the thoughts going through my head um, as I'm designing this and I just a very light touch of head cement. Now you could, um, I use my whip finish tool on this uh, just to tie it off. You could half hitch it. Um, get a couple half hitches would be just fine. Um, I find that if when I half hitch something, typically the, the thread comes right off the half hitch tool or even if I'm wrapping it with my fingers and the threads land right at the end of the head right here right behind the eye of the hook um, but with the whip finish tool I can add, I can put the threads on farther back on this head I just prefer the, the knot itself being a little bit farther back So I'm going to continue finishing up the uh, bodies on these streamer flies. I got another two dozen hooks just hanging on the side here, waiting for those bodies. Um, and then with a little bit of video magic, we'll ch -ch -ch and go ahead in the future and I'll be right back. Stay tuned. We have the hook and the vise to begin with and I'm going to start with my Vivas. This is just an eight aught thread. Vivas. It's a nice thread. You can go with the 14 knot, though that seems a little uh, small uh, or not as strong as the 8 aught. They also have a, uh, I think it's a 6 aught. I, I ordered a couple just to see what it's like. But the diameter is very thin, which is uh, what we want to help us build that nice, pretty head at the end. So I'm going to start with the uh, extra select craft fur it's made by hairline or, or sold by hairline and uh, it to me it seems an awful lot like tying with marabou so but just like with buck all bucktails I slightly restack after removing some of the fuzz from the butt ends I'm just pulling out the longest of the fibers. This pinch is a little bit too small, so I'm just going to lay it on my table and then grab another pinch about the same size. I do want to keep this fly somewhat sparse, but the first wing, this, this first color that we're putting on, it's okay if it's a little bit thicker than the top wing and if we find that this first pinch is a little heavy the top wing we can adjust our pinch to balance out it's okay the colors aren't 50 50 if we balance out the weight of how much color we're putting one on top of the other so this is a pinch about the size that I want for this one knot hook for the one and the two of course it would be slightly thinner and just like with a jig of the same size I'm just measuring it the tail will be the length of the body past the end of the hook and I adjust my grip until I get that 
length that I'm looking for. Switch my grip one last time. I'm keeping this left hand pinch tight through the whole process. I'm going to lay it in place and just give a slight push. I don't want the fibers to rotate all to all sides of this hook shank, but on three sides, the, the sides and the top would be ideal. Pick up my bobbin in two very loose wraps, and on the third time around, as I come around, I will start adding pressure and pull straight up. This will pull the fibers straight down onto the hook uh, and not force them sideways um, rolling to one side or the other. And I can add a little bit of pressure just to make sure that it's centered on the hook shank and that it can extend just to the sides, not past, not past the lateral line of the hook shank itself. Then I can grab it again, a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps back towards the um, couple wraps towards the eye and a couple wraps back towards the bend of the hook just to lock that on securely. Then I can take my pinch of the Extra Select Craft Fur Done. Uh, this is a medium gray, also by Hairline. And again, remove the fuzz from the base. This is one of the only craft furs that I've used that have that layer of fuzz. But the fibers seem so much more hair-like than uh, some of the other synthetic materials that I've checked out. And as you can see, this pinch is about half of what this one is. Just because when I added the second pinch, it did make it a little heavy. Not too heavy. This is, this is the, the, the bulk of the body that I, I really would like to see. So we're going to measure these together. We want them to be the same length, just like tying a bucktail. Switch my grip one last time. Keep this pinch tight. And again, two, two loose wraps. And then the third wrap, which is loose. And then as I come around, I lift straight up. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps towards the eye just to lock it in place. And here we can see that top wing is directly down the center. We have a little bit on the sides of that chartreuse for each side. Very nice. Uh, before we finish this head off, I go to my Crystal Flash number two. It's just a gold uh, it's kind of a reddish, bright gold as opposed to a dull yellow gold. In the first couple examples of this, I, I also used pearl. Um, I used a couple different uh, crystal flash just to see what would complement that crystal yarn. So I snip off three or four fibers. For this one out hook, four fibers I think look uh, very good. And on the smaller, like number two, just three strands looks good. And uh, we lock it on right down the uh, chartreuse color, uh, or even with the uh, lateral line between the gray and the chartreuse be fine. I rotate my vise to the other side just so I can get four more fibers. And I'll lock them right along the lateral line where the blue done and the chartreuse line up. I trim the crystal flash to the length of the hair or just shy of the ends of the hair.
and now we can finish this off. You could probably tell that I haven't tied a whole lot of these. Only a couple dozen so far. And if you have any questions on what we're doing here or how I'm going about doing that, put those comments down below. I will most likely refine the steps that I do to create this fly, um, kind of consolidate my movement, so to speak, uh, to be more efficient as I'm tying. Uh, so, you know, I'll retie something like this a year from now after I've tied a thousand of them. We'll see what the differences is, differences are, especially in the way I'm explaining it. I think it would be pretty obvious if I, if I uh, videotaped myself 40 years ago tying a jig trying to explain it um, than what we've done here, right? So, But that's about it. Head doesn't look terribly bad. I think I could um, strive for a little bit better head, but it, that's not, it's, that's a usable streamer still getting used to some of the material the Vivas thread I've had for quite some time I've used a few times on dry flies um, but I thought it would be um, ideal for these streamer heads now you can use UV uh, glue for these, you can use, um, I have a couple head cements that really, they're lacquer based uh, or some sort of solvent based um, head cements that make a really nice um, streamer, uh, that hard candy shell on the streamer head. We've investigated in the past uh, using the Duco cement, head cement, which they would work great. Uh, for this streamer. Of course, Sally Hansen's is nice and shiny, but we are going to use our lacquer based head cement. This was thinned slightly uh, because I was doing the bodies and I didn't need that candy shell, so this will soak in to the threads and leave uh, more of a once it's dry, it will look more like the collar on a bucktail jig. But there we have it. I'm, I'm really excited about um, fishing with some of these and hopefully getting some footage. Of actually catching some fish on this type of rig. Um, like I've explained, I, I'm fooling around with um, fishing this type of rig in the uh, couple rivers that I fish locally. Uh, one is uh, after a spillway and the terrain is so rocky that even uh, seasoned fishermen, guys that really know the, the area well, you're still losing jigs every three to five casts. Um, I don't even use my hair jigs there. I'll, I'll lose one or two and then I just switch over to um, plastics, uh, twister tails, that type of thing. But uh, I'm thinking that in that area, particularly um, using this style rig, maybe I could um, really up my chances of getting those fish not only to strike, but actually um, not losing anything. So. And then there's another section of the river um, here uh, closer to home, uh, the Susquehanna, that um, it's just a new location. It's a section uh, and a spot that I've heard about for years and years. I've just never fished it. It's uh, still close to town, um, so it's just a, a, an area that um, I never thought about. I know the I know there's a boat launch nearby and. 
uh, the guys will launch there and they've always talked about this one stretch of the river um, not only for walleye but for um, the pike as well so I'm looking forward to also fishing that section of the river and I think if I had to bet that might be the likely place where I'm going to get some good video so um, the current in that section because of the islands that are in and around that spot uh, the side of the river that I'd be on it's quite deep and it has a, a nice steady current that's pretty consistent any time of the year so looking forward to this uh, doing this three-way rig um, for flies and you know I'm I realize that there's people that have fished these for years and understand these for um, you know how and when to use it I've recently fallen down a YouTube rabbit hole and uh, you know it's just one of these things that I'm a little excited to try um, at the very least you know what I can learn from it and um, I might learn I don't like it I don't know <laughs> I might learn that I'm wrong so um, hopefully you know we can have something to show for that and people enjoy watching the process at the very least, we're going to tie some uh, pretty nice flies. I think that will do it for us today. As always, uh, like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Feel free to share any of these videos, even if it's for a laugh, um, as it does uh, increase awareness for the channel. Uh, tie some flies. You know, and if you have any other ideas, put those down below. If I'm doing something wrong or if I should do something a little bit better, let me know. Put those comments down below. A lot of good discussions have evolved from just the um, recent Instagram posts and Facebook things um, that I initially did, you know, a few weeks ago uh, when I first tied these up. So I think I think it's been uh, at least exciting. It's it makes it makes it fun. It makes the process fun. So, I think that'll do it for us today. Till next time, guys. Keep tying tight line.